A 35-year-old tech entrepreneur who lives in the United States says he's running for the election as president of Nigeria. Chike Ugebu is the founder of Startup 52 right here in New York. He says technology, education and entrepreneurship can be the keys that unlock Nigeria's potential. Here's a clip from a TED talk he gave a few years ago. What will happen is this. You, you all know the famous quote, you know, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, give him, teach him to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. I tweet that a little bit. I'm like, well, teach him to fish and to sell the fish. You feed him and his community for a lifetime. Mm, I like that. I like that. Chuke Yegobu joins me live now. So um, here's the thing. Why do you think Nigeria needs someone like you? Um, for instance, I'm 35, and we know two-thirds of the population is actually under 35. So by default, I represent over 60% of the population. That's one. Two, the current president was the same president the year I was born 35 years ago. Me too. <laughs> oh, look at that, right? So it's, um, it's sort of asking, um, or rather driving into an AI future with analog systems, right? Not even digital. Um, so it's important that that the future of the nation is driven by someone who understands the needs of the people, the needs of the young people, because 20 years from now, we'll be the ones in the workforce still. Okay, but that's not enough. You mentioned that there are a huge number of Nigerians mm -hmm. that are young. I'm young, mm -hmm. I'm Nigerian, should I run for president too? Obviously, Buhari was also president when I was born as well. Right. Obviously, there has to be something more right. that you're bringing to the table. Sure, there's a whole lot more, right? So, like I did say, there are three things, uh, three pillars that I'm running on. That's tech, education, and entrepreneurship, and I'll tell you why. Education is extremely important uh, to teach the young people to identify the problems and the solutions to the problems we have. Uh, technology um, amplifies uh, the revolutionary and advancements we need to solve these problems. And entrepreneurship helps us to monetize these solutions right, for ourselves and for the world. Now, with all three, Nigeria lags behind. And these are three things that I have been focused on for the past decade. Right? I have worked with um, untapped and disconnected or you know, underserved communities and empowering young people through tech, education, and entrepreneurship. In fact, I have a green card from the United States from doing all of this stuff. Um, and uh, a few times I tried going back home to set up institutions there to sort of do these things. Uh, there were so many things that stopped me, you know, the corruption, the environment, the stifling business environment. Um, so for us to move our nation forward, I think we will be, um, um, we, we're shortchanging ourselves, asking people who do not understand these three things to sort of lead us into the future. Okay, there, there is obviously one point that I really do agree mm -hmm. on um, with you, and that is just this idea that Nigeria has so much untapped potential. Yes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Enugu, and you know, you go back and there's issues with power shortages, right. there's issues with infrastructure, right. you talk about corruption, right. you know, obviously we've recovered quite a bit since you know, several years ago with the recession, but we're still not quite at the output levels we had at, in, in 2014. Every leader that comes to power in Nigeria promises everybody the world. They promise the world, we're going to fix this, we're going to fix that, and still nothing, nothing really changes. So how are you so sure that it's going to be you? You, you talk about corruption, you know, that's not just to do with the president. There are so many elements in, in Nigeria government where corruption exists. Mm -hmm. How is it going to be just you one that's going to reform all of it? All right, so uh, I'll say this. I usually tell people corruption is actually not a main problem. Corruption is everywhere. It's one. Yeah. Yeah, it's one right? of our problems. Now, it's, for us to solve the problem, we have to understand it. And I tell people, sir, when I, as a Colin Power fellow, you know, when I started my research on disconnection, youth disconnection, there were two things I found out, right? The, the solutions at the time, which were GED, um, that's high school diploma, and menial jobs, were band-aid solutions, pretty much, right? They did not address the main issue. And the main issue was you had a group of young people who had several problems that nobody understood, right? There were people who had to feed their kids that were not being able to do that. It's the same thing with Nigeria. Now, when we look at the, the state of affairs at home, I have parents who are pensioners mm -hmm. who have not been paid for over a year. Mm -hmm. Now, if you exp extrapolate that into the population, you understand that there are several people who are just trying to survive. So when a, 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 a policeman stands on the street and collects 10 naira or 20 naira from cars passing by, it's not because he wants to do that. It's because he has a mouth at home to of course, feed. Of course. Same thing with teachers, same thing with healthcare professionals. Right. So if we start by making sure that we can build, we can gain back the trust of our people in the nation, 
uh, some of these um, negative outcomes, like the corruption, we're able to start curbing that. We're not doing that because most of the people who have run the country do not understand the problem. So wait, how long have you lived in the United States? 16 years. 16 years? Yes. Um, you know, I was born and raised in London, lived right. there my whole life. I lived in Nigeria when I was 10 for about a year, go back almost every summer. Um, given your background, mm -hmm. do you think that the average person, obviously there's huge income inequality in Nigeria, yes. right? The people who are at the lower levels in terms of income levels in society are extremely poor. Yes. Do you think the average person in Nigeria can really relate to someone like you? Definitely. Why? I mean, I speak pidgin English and I'm not saying that's how <laughs> that's you relate. Not, that's I speak not, Igbo as well. But I was born in a way, right? Okay, I'm fine. an Aba boy. As in Gong, I grew up in Aba. Don't let my accent come out right now, right? Now, and I, I went through all, of, all the levels of education in Nigeria, from nursery to primary to junior secondary. Actually, I went to FGC Port Harcourt, which was a boarding school, to senior secondary, and then two years of uh, University of Lagos before coming out here. And actually, from being out here, I have gone home several times. Mm -hmm. um, I, my brother owns a software development company, Naba, and I help to mentor. I've done scholarships and all that. Now, the most important thing in understanding the problem of the young people back home is one, being able to identify with them, with, you know, what they go through and all that. Um, so when people say, well, you've been out for too long, you don't understand. Exactly, that, that was my question. You've been out for 16 years, it's a huge amount of time. A lot's changed in Nigeria since then. It, that does not mean I'm not in touch with what's going on. Okay. So my ability of actually being out here has given me a different perspective to be able to look at the condition back home and understand that quality of life is extremely important because I've been able to live both of them. Okay. So when I go back, I'm not going back to solve the problems, no. It's engaging the people to sit down and say, okay, here are the solutions you're coming up with. Here are some of the solutions that we can apply to your solutions to come up with enriched or better solutions for our people. Okay. So it's, it's having a different perspective that sort of enriches what we come, at, what we come up with at home. Okay, I like to be a very positive person. Sure. And typically in politics, you have opponents just, you know, ripping each other to shreds. Mm -hmm. Tell me three things that Buhari has done right. Done right? Done right, yes. I have to think really long and hard. <laughs> oh, come on. Three things that Buhari has done right. Mm. The fact that I can't even tell you, uh, I think is a problem. I don't know how many Nigerians that can tell you that. Do you think that, I mean, obviously, he, he was president when we were born. Yes. Um, he was a disciplinarian, mm. right, growing up. He was a very strict sort of disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something that he brings to the table in terms of leading Nigeria? How far has it gotten us? Okay, so you clearly have, you have nothing nice to say about Buhari at all. I have nothing negative to say as well. The only okay. thing I'm saying is Buhari is older than the nation. Nigeria is only 58, right? Buhari is close to 80, right? Um, he doesn't, I, I respect my elders. I respect him okay. as an elder. But Buhari does not have what it takes to lead Nigeria into the fourth industrial revolution. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And not just him, but our current crop of leaders. Okay, so um, in terms of the election in 2019, obviously you've got, uh, there's going to be a PDP candidate, obviously Buhari as well. Um, who are you? Which party are you going to be joining? Um, so I'm looking at four of them now. Nigeria has about 68 registered parties and about 100 that are on a waiting list to get approved. So finding a party would not be a problem, right? Um, so there are two things that we're looking for. We want to make sure that our ideologies match up with theirs. And that two, they have the capacity um, to reach out to the entire nation. Uh, so those two things are very important, making sure that you align with what we believe in, which is youth-centered, education, entrepreneurship, technology-focused. Um, I, I have a four-solution plan, feed the people, because I think it's important that people are able to eat invest in their well-being. So the infrastructure, the education, the healthcare, the security, all of that goes into investing in the well-being, mm -hmm. invest in their ideas. We have very industrious and very innovative, so many innovative minds back home. Nigerians are the most educated, you know, people in the diaspora, at least in the US, right? So the potential is there. So investing in their ideas is extremely important. And then investing in the future. As the rest of the world, China is investing $150 billion to build an artificial intelligence village. Um, the US, France, you know, 
everyone is doing that. Everyone is, you know, in the same race to the fourth industrial revolution. And Africa doesn't have that, mm -hmm. right? So that's the second one, the lack of vision and urgency from um, our leaders is, is a problem we have. Now, also, the, the disconnection between those at home and in the diaspora, I think, is something we have to fix. Mm -hmm. And being one who has, who has lived on both sides, I, I, I have a network of people here as well as home. How do we marry these things for solutions back home? And then they advocate it for um, people of African descent globally. I think Nigeria, as the largest black nation, that responsibility falls on us to be able to advocate against you know, in, injustices and oppression of our people. Um, um, you know, a lot of people look at you and just say, you know, this is great, obviously he's well educated, he's got a lot of accolades, he's well traveled and he's idealistic, but you know, he's just a kid. He's only in his 30s, what can he really bring to the table? Given that perception of you already, mm -hmm. what is gonna be your campaign strategy? Uh, so we, I mean, uh, I can't talk about technology, education and entrepreneurship and try to do politics like Nigerian politicians, right? So our strategy is technology focused, is very heavy on technology and coming up with uh, brilliant and you know, novel you know, um, 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 strategies, for the lack of a better word, and making sure we get our message across. There's uh, a high penetration, mobile penetration in Nigeria, about 140 to 160 million people are connected online. So this election actually, in my opinion, um, would be on, on social media, right? But it's also important to understand that you have to reach the grassroots people. So I have a team back home right now. Um, we're making sure that our capacity to reach everyone that we need to talk to um, is, is on point, um, at least the 18 to 35 year olds. The older ones can join us as well if they <laughs> okay. want to, but our focus right now is 18 to 35 year olds and, re and making sure they engage they understand the importance of this election and their futures and how it affects their futures. And hey, let's make history together.